All right, good evening, everybody. I would like to call to order the Concord Township Board of Trustees meeting for May 4th, 2022. If you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Dawson, can you please call roll? Mrs. Lucci. Present. Mr. McIntosh. Present. And Mr. Dondorfer. Present. The approval of minutes from April 20th. Uh, I approved, uh, I move to approve the minutes as written. And I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, I would abstain. All right, it's time for our elected officials reports. Our fiscal officer, Mrs. Dawson. Okay, thank you very much. As of April 30th, we were 33% of the way through the calendar year. The treasury balance for the 20 active funds within the township treasury was $16.6 .6 million. However, the treasury balance includes $10.8 million in funds set aside for specific projects. Year-to-date expenditures were 17% of the amount appropriated, and the revenue is at 46% received for 2022. So we are well within budget. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to call my office at 440 Three five four seven five one six. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dawson. Trustees, Mr. Dondorfer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I did have a few phone calls since uh, the last meeting that I was in attendance of. I had some questions regarding water drainage and uh, on a street in Concord Township uh, that involved the one of our new pavement uh, projects, and uh, Mr. Brown was able to help me with that and is going to work with the resident on trying to address those concerns. We'd like to remind our residents that uh, during the last meeting, Lake County Stormwater made a presentation on uh, water control basins and certain developments and what responsibility that lies uh, upon as far as HOAs and what maintenance and that things of that nature are required. Uh, we feel that a lot of questions from uh, homeowners and different developments on uh, issues uh, relevant to that. And if you did not see the meeting, you could uh, watch it on YouTube and, and, and get informed on the requirements and, and maintenance and things of that nature. I uh, would like to say that I think we uh, have a um, arrangement with Lake Metro Parks as far as a collaboration on our uh, Greenway. We had some residents that thought it might be beneficial to have a access path from the Greenway quarter to Town Hall to allow residents that are on the grounds here um, access to immediate access to the Greenway instead of further down um, on Ravenna Road. So I know that uh, Mr. Rose has worked with uh, Lake Metro Parks on an arrangement with, but with that. And I think we're going to collaborate on a project to have a access path put in um, to Town Hall to the Greenway, which I think will be great for our residents. Um, would like to remind everybody if you haven't uh, registered yet in May for our bicentennial, uh, what is it, one mile run up? One and a quarter, the, the dash, the derby dash. It would be dash. great for people to come out and join us. I'm you looking forward to it. You can walk it too. Yeah, you can walk it too. Uh, <laughs> the summer concert series will be starting soon, so that's always great. And um, had some other calls uh, regarding uh, an item on the agenda that we'll I'll address later in the comments portion. But that's okay. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dondorfer. Mr. McIntosh. Oh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, well, yesterday I had the opportunity to engage with a lot of residents in Concord Township because I was able to serve with Mr. Dondorfer as a rover for the Lake County Board of Elections, something I've done for a lot of years. And I had a lot of people stop me. I'm one of your residents. Uh, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Always great to make sure that the election goes as, as planned, and it was a, it was a nice, nice day to be out working with the community. Um, I fielded some calls and ended up talking with the Ohio Township Association about um, a, a resident in Concord has pushed some legislation down in Columbus, and I've had some lengthy conversations to that end, and um, so that took a bit of time. Had a number of conversations and emails regarding um, Ivy Ridge. It's an item that's on the agenda this evening for a vote. Um, questions and, and things. Um, I did have some questions about VZA and zoning commission hearings recently. Um, been spent a bit of time on that. Friday we had our Arbor Day dedication. It was a beautiful day out. As much as our fall has been hot and cold and rainy, we got blessed with a lucky day. And then um, we had a really nice ceremony dedicating our second ball field here on Town Hall campus to um, 
calling it <coughs> Carrasca Field for former service director Frank Carrasca, who we didn't have a chance to work with a whole lot um, because he retired uh, right at the start of our tenure together. But I know Frank was instrumental in getting that ball field started and having leading the service department to getting it built. It's a really great asset, and I know um, a lot of the community organizations utilize it, and it's really highly thought of. It was it was nice. That was really a proud moment to be able to dedicate that to him. You could tell that he was really appreciative of that recognition and well deserved so um, I'm looking forward to the summer concerts and community day this year being our bicentennial year I will be missing the derby dash so I won't be able to run with you Carl I'll be out of town on business this weekend but, uh, we'll think of um, yeah so enjoy that and with that was my report all right thank you Mr. McIntosh so yes it was great celebrating Arbor Day last week and then our our dedication to the ball field for Mr. Carrasca. Thank you to the service department for your help in getting that tree ready to go. Um, I also did have some calls and fielded some emails for folks that have questions surrounding the development that we're going to talk about tonight. The, there are some grand openings for some businesses in by Cryle there, Wolfgang Bakery and Grooming on Cryle Road, as well as Mary's Diner are set to have ribbon and cut, cuttings for next week, so we look forward to that. It's been great seeing a lot of the pickleball players out there, so I will get out there. We will get out there sooner rather than later, but it looks like it's, it's pretty full, so wonderful to see that. And last, I would like to just wish all the mothers out there have a wonderful, happy Mother's Day. All right, and with that, we will go to our department reports, our administration department, Mr. Andy Rose. Thank you, Mrs. Lucci, members of the board, Mrs. Dawson, members of the audience, good evening. Uh, I'll start with a few items that are on the agenda this evening. Uh, item D is a purchase order to Lake County Telecom Telecommunications. Uh, that covers the owner provided telecommunications equipment and installation for Fire Station 1. Uh, it's beneficial to have them do it since they're the ones who are going to be the ones maintaining it throughout the life of the station. And I know that the director of Telecom and the fire chief have worked closely together to make sure everything's all set. Uh, item E is a motion for an executive session. That is to discuss the recent lawsuit that is now pending. Um, and the executive session will be pursuant to Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22G3. So I'd ask for a favorable consideration at the appropriate time. Uh, I was down in Columbus uh, this past Monday. I'm on the uh, executive board uh, for Clout, and we had our quarterly meeting. Um, for, I was very privileged that my peers, I was elected as the vice chair for Clout for the state, so I'll be uh, engaged in some legislative initiatives there. Um, we went through our legislative priorities uh, for the remainder of the year. We reviewed some pending uh, legislative bills that are currently before the state legislature. Uh, and I will be providing a comprehensive update to the Lake County Township Association at our next meeting uh, in June about those different things. Um, I know our service director is going to touch on road projects, but um, I, I saw a close call yesterday and I just felt it important to bring this up. I, I strongly remind all residents, the road crews are out. They're wearing safety vests, they put the cones out, they got the lights on the trucks. And I strongly urge the motorist to please slow down and move over. A little patience goes a long way. Um, as mentioned, Arbor Day was last Friday. Uh, I would also like to, I would like to thank Klein Nursery for the donation of the beautiful oak tree. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful out there. I'd also, uh, we're very glad that we had members of the Concord Garden Club uh, who joined us for the event and they also helped us plant uh, the tree. And speaking of Garden Club, Rick, can you bring up my bicentennial picture for this meeting? Uh, every meeting I'm featuring a picture out of our, our book regarding the bicentennial. Uh, what you see before you, our featured bicentennial picture this meeting is a photo of the Concord Garden Club. Um, our Garden Club was founded by uh, Gladys Bushman and Marge Madsen in 1961. Um, the initial membership had 10 members. Um, and over the years, it's now grown. There's over 60 members of the Garden Club. Uh, last year, they celebrated their 60th anniversary. Um, they do a fantastic job of taking care of all the landscaping beds around here. 
and in about another month when all the flowers get set and bloom it is absolutely breathtaking uh, around all the township buildings and they they just make them shine brightly and the residents and visitors get to enjoy them throughout the whole growing season so uh, my featured picture out of the book this this meeting is the garden club and we thank them for all of their hard work and dedication to the township and that concludes my report thank you madam chair thank you mr rose and congrats on your vice chair position thank you moving on to our fire department chief Zabo. good evening everyone good evening. first of all i want to thank the uh, board for swearing in this evening our three newest members of uh, concord fire department uh, i continue to be impressed and honored to uh, represent the fire department and the firefighters in it and uh, uh, Real happy with the, the work that they do and the professionalism and, and service that they provide to our community. Um, for the month of April, we had 209 total runs, 138 of them EMS with 111 transports. We had 71 non-EMS events, uh, three fires, uh, two inside of Concord, one leaf fire that extended to the residents, and a gas grill fire that did not affect any structures. And then outside of Concord, we assisted with one structure fire. Uh, we gave mutual aid 17 times. We received mutual aid 10 times. And we had 44 overlapping calls, uh, or about 21%. Uh, Fire Prevention Bureau uh, completed nine, uh, 59 inspections, accounting for about 84 hours. They did pl nine plan reviews, accounting for about 26 hours. And uh, about 24 hours in uh, continuing education. Uh, they also assisted in a fire investigation in Painesville Township. They also provided four hours of safety and first aid CPR AED training for 22 staff members at Goddard School. So it's nice to get out in the community and help our businesses with, uh, with that necessary training. And we had one uh, residential lockbox returned. Uh, this month, Concord Township Fire Department became a trusted training provider with the American Red Cross. The Concord Township Fire Department has offered and has taught many safety classes over the years to our residents and businesses. Uh, now we can offer certification for the classes in which we teach for our businesses, and uh, these certifications often meet OSHA requirements too. So another added benefit uh, to our education series. Um, fire prevention's been out working with uh, ordinance technologies, helping them get their uh, renovations wrapped up, uh, working with accurate landscaping, Randpack, Mary's Diner to be completed very soon, uh, Stephen Douglas Corp they've been working with, and Lucky's Market doing some renovation, and, uh, and UH TriPoint Hospital is uh, doing some internal renovation as well. So they've been out in the community and the businesses and making sure they're fire safe. Um, Rick, could you hit, hit my PowerPoint for me, please? So Concord Fire 2 was, uh, wishes all the moms a, uh, a very happy Mother's Day. Um, if you can't see it, it says, uh, we're making you breakfast for Mother's Day, Mom, but we have one question. How do we work this thing? And it's a fire extinguisher. So, so we just um, we want to remind everyone just, you know, to, to have an enjoyable Mother's Day to all the moms. and. Um, if you have any questions about fire extinguishers, home sm uh, uh, smoke alarms, don't hesitate to give us a call and we're, we'll be there to help. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Next is our service department, Mr. Tim Brown. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. The Concord Township Joint Road Reservicing Projects have begun and are progressing very well. Curb replacement was completed on Stonewick Drive and Nature View. Milling of these roads is scheduled for Friday, 4-6. The milling and intermediate asphalt layers are complete on Breezewood, Clear Lake Drive, Conley, and Ridgewater. The next step for these roads will be the chip and seal surface course with a fog coat. Brian, and Brian Drive and David Drive have been milled and depth repairs are being made. The service department crews have been out making sod repairs, performing ditch maintenance, curb inlet repairs, and pothole patching. The uh, yard waste drop off at the service department is open to residents Monday through Friday. 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. This Saturday, May 7th, the annual brush day drop-off 
will take place. Residents may drop off brought to the service department from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Saturday, May 21st will be the second brush drop off day. The uh, service department encourages residents to contact us with any questions or concerns. You can reach us at 440-350-3225 or by email at concordtwp.com under service department. And the service department would also like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day and that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right, next is zoning. Mrs. Freeman. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so during the month of April, the zoning department approved 26 zoning permit applications, issued 25 certificates of zoning compliance, and received 11 new complaints about potential zoning violations. Staff also reviewed two site plan review applications for new commercial projects being proposed within the township. And at last night's zoning commission meeting, the board conditionally approved plans for a new, uh, for the Stephen Douglas Corporation. This is a new business that's moving to Concord Township, and we're excited to have them here. Finally, I just want to finish up with a quick reminder to some of our residents who might be thinking about getting rid of some of their junk and hold, holding a garage sale um, sometime this spring or summer. Um, we do have a couple zoning requirements in regards to that. Um, please uh, limit your garage sales to no more than three times in any 12-month period for no more than 72 hours for each sale event. You're permitted one temporary sign um, promoting the sale um, as long as the sign is located on the property. Um, in addition, you, you can have one off-site directional sign with the permission of the off-site property owner. Um, please make sure that the signs are 10 feet back from the road right away and 10 feet from side property lines. Um, you should not be posting your signs on utility poles, street signs, traffic or other traffic, com traffic control devices or within the public road right away. While, while the township does not require any kind of permit to put up your temporary uh, garage sale signs, um, any sign that is not displayed in accordance with these requirements could be removed by the zoning department. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Heather. All right, recreation. This is Deborah Esker. Good evening, everybody. As we head into the beautiful month of May and our special bicentennial year, we welcome warmer weather and beautiful blooms, and we invite residents to stop and smell the roses and take time out to enjoy a class or a social and celebrate this special year with neighbors and friends. So I'm excited to tell you about the details of the May programs that the Recreation Department has planned for our guests and our residents. Rick, please fire up that PowerPoint. Thank you very much. This month's bicentennial snapshot in history honors Concord Township's early industry and economic development. The landscape of Concord in 1822 looked considerably different than it does today. Natural forests abounded while early settlers began girdling trees and clearing the land. Pioneers soon discovered the advantage of Big Creek, which is pictured here, and its many natural waterfalls. Water wheels were used to power early production machines for tanneries, woolen mills, and carding mills, producing leather and woolen yarn. And the most widely known Concord industry was the Pease Turning Shop, which used to be located at Girdled Road and Big Creek. It produced vases, pails, goblets, and other vessels. And several Peaseware pieces were on display at the 1876 Philadelphia Exposition and the 1893 Chicago's World Fair. So now you know that Concord Township had a presence at those two major historical events that also introduced 27 million people to the invention of the elevator, the Ferris wheel, the first voice recording, the zipper, and Cracker Jacks. <laughs> As Carl was mentioning, run for the roses at Concord Township's Derby Dash on Sunday, May 22nd. Modeled after the Kentucky Derby one and a quarter mile racetrack, residents and guests are invited to enjoy a short and pleasant uh, walk or run that begins and ends at the Lake Erie College Equestrian Center. Recreation staff will host a variety of derby themed games and activities at the finish line, including cornhole and of course horseshoes. All are invited to participate in our horsey races, complete with inflatable stick horses, so be sure to bring your camera. Um, Lake Erie College's mascot, Stormy, the miniature horse, will also be on hand or hoof for pictures. Packet pickup is May 19th and 20th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Community Center and from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on May 22nd at the Equestrian Center just prior to the dash. Whimsical awards will be presented to the top male and female overall finishers and the top three finishers in the categories by these age groups. Minis, 12 and under, foals, 
13 to 18, stallions and mares, 19 to 59, and equestrians, 60 and older. All runners will receive a commemorative Concord Township Bicentennial Medal, but you can sign up now at concordtwp.com or at gcxcracing.com. And get your creative juices flowing at our next Library Tuesday program on May 17th, where staff from the Morley Library will show you how to create personalized coffee mugs using Sharpie markers. It's becoming a, quite a, a popular form of art and really makes your morning coffee that much more enjoyable. Library Tuesday programs are free and open to the public and new friends are always welcome. So just call the Recreation Department to reserve your seat. And it seems like every time that I announce we're hosting a blood drive at the community center, we're in the midst of a blood shortage and this month is no exception. So please consider donating the gift of life at our next American Red Cross blood drive on Wednesday, May 11th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. One donation can save up to three people's lives, and I can't think of a better Mother's Day gift than that. And earlier this afternoon, we kicked off um, our Kentucky Derby month with a lovely senior social, which was our Kentucky Derby-themed tea. Uh, let me just say the hats were spectacular at the social. We had a great time. And I want to shout out to our program coordinators, Rachel Lamb and Tracy Butler, for coordinating this lovely event, and to Susie Cobb, who is our administrative assistant, and her family for cooking all the food, tea sandwiches, and these amazing uh, variety of desserts. So it was just a lovely, lovely event this afternoon. Our next senior social is Wednesday, May 11th, and features tips on downsizing your home. Then on May 18th, the showbiz kids are back with a salute to the spirit of America. The senior dance troupe is a crowd favorite, so be sure to reserve your seat and your treat today. All senior socials are Wednesday afternoons at the community center and begin at 1 p.m. They're free and open to the public, and we always invite new friends. Check out the Recreation Department's leisure class offerings in May. This month, we offer Baton for Kids, Introduction to Pickleball over here at the Town Hall Pickleball Courts, Morning Gentle Yoga, Yoga Pilates Fusion, Tai Chi, martial arts for adults and kids, meditation and mindfulness, getting started with Medicare, and smart investing. Space is available in most classes, so sign up online at concordtwp.com or just contact the Recreation Department for personal assistance anytime. And if anyone's looking for a new hobby or a new friend, check out the variety of social groups and clubs that meet regularly at the community center. From gardening to music to cards to art to sewing to trivia, there are a lot of opportunities to meet new people and new members are always welcome. Just call the Recreation Department for details on joining the club and start your new adventure. And dust off those lawn chairs and throw them in your trunk and get ready for our Thursday evening summer concert series that begins on June 9th. In honor of our bicentennial year, our theme this year is Concord Through the Ages, with bands that specialize in music from different decades. The Swingin' Primetime Big Band kicks off our series on June 9th. The Geese Cats perform our favorite doo-wops and other 50s tunes on June 16th. The British are invading on June 23rd with Blue Evolution, and Pieces of Eight plays classic rock with horns and brass on June 30th. The Headlands Beach Experience plays 70s and 80s favorites on July 7th, and the Breakfast Club performs for the first time in Concord on July 14th. The Saints take the stage on July 21st with Americana Rock, and our series comes to a strong finish on July 28th with a local favorite, Risk Factor. We'll have food trucks and craft vendors at each concert, plus we'll raffle off a special bicentennial basket at each concert at Band Break. So let's have a great summer together and celebrate our bicentennial at our summer concert series. And the celebration continues with a beloved annual community-wide get-together. Our Bicentennial Community Days are going to be spectacular this year with an upscale Uncorked on Friday, August 5th, an activity-packed Bicentennial Family Day on Saturday, August 6th. A very special Amped Up Uncork kicks off our Bicentennial Community Days this year on Friday, August 5th. The Thirsty Philly will provide signature Concord cocktails, beer, and wine as guests peruse our bicentennial raffle that is promising to be our best yet. The rock radio band will play hits and dance favorites that span over 50 years, and local favorite food trucks will provide a nice variety of dinner options. This is a fun and relaxing um, evening for adults only. And the next day is all about the kids and all about families. 
Saturday, August 6th, is our Bicentennial Family Day. The day begins with a traditional 5K run and the fire department's awesome pancake breakfast in the morning. And then ac activities uh, kicks off at 4 o'clock with a special Bicentennial flag raising, immediately followed by a packed schedule of activities at the Town Hall campus and the Old Stone School. Guests can grab dinner and a beer at Town Hall, browse the Bicentennial raffle, enjoy a wide variety of games and, and activities at Kids World, participate in the beloved traditional frog jump contest, and experience Bubble Palooza, and then take the little train over to the Old Stone School to watch history come alive with pioneer life demonstrations and lots of old-fashioned kids' games. Pieces of Eight Band kicks off at 5 p.m. and will celebrate Concord's birthday party, the Bicentennial birthday party, at 7 p.m. Abbey Rodeo takes the stage at 8 with a break at 9 for the drawing of our Bicentennial raffle. And the wonderful two-day celebration comes to a close with a bang with a spectacular fireworks display at 10 p.m. So look for details of the Summer Concert Series and Community Day in the summer edition of the Grapevine that's coming to your homes any day now. There's still plenty of opportunities for businesses and individuals to sponsor a bicentennial event or program, or simply donate and show your support for Concord Township um, in our special bicentennial year. In return for generous donations, we'll thank you in the fall edition of the Grapevine Newsletter, in our eGrapevine email news blast, on our website and social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just contact the Recreation Department for details on how you can become a bicentennial sponsor and take your place in Concord history. So happy 200th birthday, Concord, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms and the women out there who have helped shape our lives and made us who we are. Life isn't simple, it doesn't come with a manual, and that, my friends, is why we have mothers and grandmothers. Um, I wish a happy birthday to Deputy Fire Chief Ron Terriaco this month. Um, thanks so much for your time tonight, and take care, everybody, on this lovely 4th of May evening, so may the 4th be with you. Thank you very much, Deb. Well done. All right, so we're skipping the Concord Law presentation this evening, and we are going to move to the audience portion. I know we have a lot of audience here, and we appreciate you. We definitely want to hear you. But let's all take a deep breath first. <laughs> and um, I guess we will start on this side. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak? Um, come up to the podium, please state your name and your address, and we are happy to hear from you. Anybody on this side of the room? Okay, hearing none, let's move over to the other side. Anyone starting in the first row that would like to come up and speak? Second row? Third row? Or throw. All right. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, earlier, I passed out a copy of the letter that I submitted to you all. Just say your name and your address, please. Oh, I'm sorry. That's David, okay. David Vitas, 8075 North Orchard Road. Concord Township. Thank you. Um, I'm here tonight actually on the advice of my attorney um, to deliver some documents and these documents are ones that I previously has sent to the trustees uh, for review um, periodically through this whole process and they're being submitted so that they're inclusive. Now this is all the legal garbage that uh, Mike will probably understand, but uh, submitted for inclusion as part of the records of keeping these procedures so they may be available for review in any future proceedings that may be required with respect to this development. Um, so with that, I do have these documents and I wish to give them to whoever would be the proper person. Um, also, um, I'd, I'd like to mention, I, I know that, again, this has been going on for, I know, May of 21, as far as I know, as far back as I go. But, uh, uh, and I know your decision tonight is basically <clears throat> pretty simple. You're either gonna vote for or against 
the development, the final plans of the development. Um, I'm I'm opposed to the PUD as it's presented tonight, and I expect you as our trustees that you're willing to look at my concerns and the other residents' concerns uh, and, and deny the plan as it stands um, and require the developer to resubmit his plan that includes addressing the issues that I've kind of uh, brought up in, an, in these documents and that. Um, so that's basically all I have to say. Uh, again, I've said it all in the past, so it's not worth rehashing. Um, also, um, I'm speaking on behalf of my neighbor, um, Chris Lazuka, and I know on earlier in the week he passed out a, a memo or a letter to you all. Um, again, uh, expressing his opposition to the to the uh, plans also. So. Uh, with that, that's it. Okay. Who might, who might get to you? Thank you, Mr. Vitas. Amy, you're the lucky one. I'm, I'm the lucky one. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> okay, anyone else that would li like to speak? Yep. Sir? Good evening, everybody. Uh, Rich Wallach, 11478 Viceroy Street. So as it applies to this development that's going in um, behind our house, um, I have reached an agreement with the developer to allow for him to clear the 25 feet in exchange for a fence between the two properties. So I'm okay with wiping out the, the rest of the 25 feet. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mary Jo Circa, I'm at 11419 Girdled Road, and the road into the development is going right next door to our property. And I'm just wondering, is there going to be any kind of a buffer to the light and the traffic going in and out? Any kind of fencing or bushes or trees or something to give us a little bit of privacy? Because it's like five, six feet from our property line from our parking area. And that's all my question is, I haven't heard anything about what the developer plans to do about that, or even going back in the light, you know, um, what's the lighting gonna be like? Uh, that's, I don't know any answers to that. And that's my big concern, being right next door and having all the traffic coming in and out. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. All right, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, Dan Crock. Uh, I live at 11482 uh, Viceroy Street. I, too, um, as the Wallachs have, have reached an agreement with the uh, developer to give up the 25 foot in exchange for a fence. Uh, it seems to be able to address his needs as far as fitting in the uh, development in in there where he needs to so um, and we're going to get a fence in exchange also so I just probably should mention that too okay thank you okay anyone else yes sir Mike Rizzola 11470 Viceroy Street uh, to begin with I was I've been away and I was unaware that uh, I could cut an individual deal with this developer regarding my property. Uh, secondly, I, I'm wondering, I've spoken with uh, Trustee Lucci, and I'm wondering if uh, the other trustees have seen what sits behind our homes on Viceroy, if you physically went there and looked at that. My question is, how long am I gonna have to look at that? Is there something in this developer's plans is that going to wait until the infrastructure is in? Must I look at all those fallen trees until uh, the road is put in? If he was able to come in and get those trees right now, 
he should be able to come in at this point without infrastructure and take those trees out. I also saw a couple of stakes put into my yard that were roughly about 19 to 20 feet and two to three feet beyond that stake, and I'm assuming it was supposed to be 25 feet, some beautiful trees were taken out. Uh, again, I, I've been away and I understand that I, I haven't been here for quite some time, but uh, is, is that been addressed? I mean, if you saw that, that's something, if, if you owned a lot in this, in this township and somebody next to you let strewn trees lie for as long as a year, what would you do? I'm certain that you would contact your trustee. Uh, is there something in the works for the removal of these things? Well, we, you know, we, we can hear more from the, the developer what his plans are for that. Well, we have an opportunity for yeah. 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 Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. We're going to address those questions. <laughs> Okay, anyone else from the audience that would like to say a few words? Thank you, Mr. Rizzola. Okay, so we're gonna move on to old business. Seeing that we have none, we're gonna move on to new business. Uh, Madam Chairman, I make a <clears throat> motion to approve the April financial report. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Madam Chair, I will make a motion to approve conditional offer of employment as a part-time probationary firefighter EMT basic to Colin Chambers pending background check and physical. Aye, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, Madam Chairman, I vote to approve the final development plan for Ivy Ridge Phase 1 Quail Hollow planned unit development. I will second. Okay, so for discussion. Um, you want to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot. I'll, I'll, I'll fire off. I, I have a, um, I think this was discussed, well, I know it was discussed um, last summer when we did the preliminary approval. And um, just to be clear, you know, in reference that we're working with the PUD that was approved in 1986. So um, all of these properties with respect to Quail Hollow were always going to be developed um, as far as trees coming down and residences being put in. So that's, we're working with the, those tools and that long-term thinking. I know we've received some emails that reference uh, the 2004 comp plan and certain aspects of density with respect to what our zoning code says today and realize that you know when that was approved that as things proceed you know we're that language and that uh, zoning text remains in place. Um, with respect to I think we'll ask, ask the developer if he choose to answer questions as far as the process but I'd like to begin because we've had a lot of conversations individually with residents and since we're sort of more formally on the record we have an audience here I was wondering if Mr. Lucas could clarify some aspects with respect to um, I know we had some conversations about tree removal and that sort of process um, if you could color in some lines here with respect to private property and that process um, I do know that we fielded questions about permits um, and whether those things were, but my understanding is, well, not my understanding, my knowledge is Concord Township doesn't have purview on certain things that required permitting. Um, could you sort of just fill in for everybody the, how, that process and how it works? Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna give a little history here. Uh, when this was originally established, this PUD back in 1986, uh, it was a part of a rezoning Plan unit developments, which is a PUD, was uh, at pretty much on the embryonic stage in terms of a development tool in that. Uh, when the application was made for the rezoning of the PUD that currently exists today, it's important to know initially that it's 540 acres, all right? And the one provision that was included within the total application for rezoning, and it's an integral part of the rezoning process itself that was ultimately approved to make this an R, or excuse me, a PUD, uh, is that there was that 25 foot buffer that's been brought up repeatedly around the perimeter. Uh, and that was part of the rezoning. The second component that's come up uh, in various forms since the 
uh, this became a, uh, a development plan is declarations of restrictions and covenants. All right, so the first thing I wanna say is the declaration of restrictions and covenants, generally it's, there's no enforcement tool for the township to enforce that. The declarations and covenants and restrictions are imposed by the developer, generally the owner himself. And then he files that as the development occurs. Now, there's a 540 acre plan unit development here. There's been multiple phases completed. So in conjunction with the development for each particular phase, and I used this example before, you've got a pie and you're slicing off a piece for development purposes and that particular piece then contains generally covenants and declarations of restrictions to be enforced. It's filed of record with the Lake County Recorder's Office with the uh, uh, declaration of restrictions. It becomes part of the process for the development itself. So each time there's a development phase put in each time that occurs, there's generally either a, a new declaration of restrictions or in this particular overall pie, if you will, there's amendments to each declaration of restriction in terms of certain restrictions for that particular development and that. Uh, and there's been over eight amendments that are a matter of record since 1986 because each development that occurred Sometimes there was clerical errors that needed to be corrected. Sometimes there was a change in terms of who had the enforcement of the declaration and restrictions and that. But the, the, the main point, because the township trustees have been asked, you're not enforcing the declaration and restrictions, they don't have standing to force the declaration and restrictions. The one that has the standing, if there's a violation of those declaration restrictions, is the declarant himself who's recorded that as part of the process for the development in that, which <clears throat> in this particular case is Quail Hollow Development Inc. So they're the ones under the multiple declarations and restrictions for the various pies of the total pie, slices of the pie of the total pie that have been developed that can enforce those restrictions. As a matter, uh, as an observational aside, the declarant sometimes depending on the development and declaration of restrictions, can impose or request that the new homeowners association, once it's established, takes over once the whole process is developed to enforce the declaration of restrictions, and that's recorded. Um, in general, that's what happens, they, because the declarant doesn't stick around forever, and ultimately the new homeowners association provides a vehicle for that. The only exception generally where a governmental entity, entity uh, does enforce declaration of restrictions is usually limited to where there's a detention pond, and it, ha the, it has to be agreed to by the township in this particular case, or the governmental entity as a general proposition, is where there's a need to maintain uh, a detention or retention basin that controls surface water runoff. And, one of the problems that happens occasionally, uh, sadly, is the homeowners association basically loses its energy after a while and it basically falls apart. And generally the governmental entities want to keep the ability to go in and enforce the requirements to maintain the detention and retention basis because if it's not maintained, sludge builds up and it doesn't properly handle surface water runoff, which causes big problems all around the adjacent properties in that. So, but that's included specifically within the declaration and bylaws for each development. Now, in terms of this particular development that's here tonight, there's no declaration or restrictions that have been filed on this particular property yet. So there's nothing in this particular phase, this piece of the pie, if you will, that the declaration and restrictions uh, when you say you haven't enforced them, there are no declaration of restrictions on this particular property phase. The only thing that's there that was part of the, the initial process back in 1986 is the 25 foot buffer. And that was part of the rezoning, which is different, and I believe of some legal significance, different 
from a declaration or restriction. The 25 foot buffer applies on the perimeter of the entire 540 acres. So, could I, you, could you, um, so tonight is the uh, upon final approval is the point where we can put that. We we can uh, approve it subsequent, and then we can put that language there. We can basically stipulate that we want that to be honored, and that at that point, then that becomes filed, and that would become tangible. But not up until now, it's not it's not there. Is that well, the, the 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 township. Are you talking about the declaration and restrictions? Right. The township still, doesn't prepare still, those. Still the developer over, the developer right. prepares those. The developer's legal counsel always prepares the declaration and restrictions. Generally. Uh, legal counsel reviews them uh, to make sure that they are consistent with the uh, final development plan approval that was done by the trustees. And I think to answer Mr. Rizzo's question about cutting trees down, um, it's private land. The, the landowner can can remove the trees. We are not in a position to enforce it as far oh, as yeah, as yeah. far as clearing the land goes. It, it's usually up to the developer to submit their plan as far as how they tend to, to phase out and remove. But um, where, where, where is our jurisdiction with respect to The township to that? doesn't have any control over uh, a private property owner or developer cutting. Uh, so it's like if your neighbor cuts down a bunch of trees and you're no. happy about it, you don't really have any say in it. No, no. But it, 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 more specifically with reference to an issue came up about were they in compliance with the, uh, the EPA permit uh, that would perhaps have some bearing in terms of what was being cut down uh, because of a protected species that was on the property and that. And the township doesn't have any ability other than to simply call it upon the request of a resident, call the EPA and say, hey, was there a permit for this? Because this was done. And maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. But the enforceability of that is what the state or federal EPA, not with the township. So, and same thing with, you know, certain uh, subdivision regulations that are in the county. The county has their own subdivision regulations. Soil and water has certain requirements. Again, the township <coughs> trustees can call and say, hey, this is going on. Can you come on and look at this? Can you take ensure that there's no violation of any regulations under soil and water at the, at the county level? But the township, again, doesn't have any authority to enforce county regulations. The county does that, so. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas, I have one more question. Yep. Regarding traffic study, as far as approvals and, and tra so again, that falls under the, the county Regulations. Well, the the uh, the submission of a traffic analysis is required under our resolution. So uh, they have to, as part of the final development plan, include a traffic study, which was required in the preliminary plan as well. Uh, so there has to be one that's been submitted, and it has to be a final plan under the uh, language of the ordinance, or excuse me, the resolution. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Did okay. you want to share any more, Mr. McIntosh, before I move on to? Um, I guess yeah, I've got a lot of thoughts on this um, after being in zoning as long as I have. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to hold up a few marks. The only thing I will say is that, um, you know, I, I've had this, the clearing of trees, uh, I understand. I, I moved into a house 10 years, 11 years ago, current house I live in, and I had a thought process of, so I know what you're talking about. I came home one day and this whole back of trees, I thought I was going to have like half of them were gone. So um, I certainly can appreciate where you're coming from and I've experienced what you're talking about. Um, developing in Concord Township is always hard. I've, I've been across a lot of people get very upset. It's change. Um, we see things as they are and, and that's unfortunately the way it goes. Um, I think there are concerns with the residents here that are, are uh, justified and appropriate. I, I, uh, I think at some point maybe might ask the developer if there's a few things he'd like to clarify as far as phasing of it and how that might work. And then I know we have um, some questions about the in and out traffic as far as lighting and that. I don't know if they want to take an opportunity to address that. Um, but I, I'll hold off my remarks. If you guys have anything else to add or say? Okay. Um, as I move through my remarks, I'd like to just sort of uh, 
establish some summary of this PUD. Um, initially, we all understand it was approved in 1986. This, this board of trustees um, inherited phase 30. Um, under the initial PUD, or the planned unit development, uh, initially it was planned for 250 multifamily units that were allowed on this site. Um, I think with the preliminary plan that was approved back in July of this of last year, uh, I, I believe the developer did do some due diligence as far as reducing uh, the yield amount for the preliminary, preliminary plan um, in which it contained 84 units and 45 attached townhome units. Um, I think that is a step uh, in the right direction as far as what's desired at this point in time for Concord Township. Um, I'm glad that Mike sort of uh, identified some of the issues that I wanted to um, resolve for many residents because in some of the letters and correspondence that we had, there was, seems to be some confusion about um, the deed restrictions and covenants and things of that nature and who has the obligation to enforce those and things of that nature. And Mike did a great job uh, covering how once each phase is completed, those declarations and deed restrictions are identified and filed by the developer. In more, most cases, those are then turned over to a homeowners association and that homeowners association, as well as the residents, have the right to enforce um, whatever restrictions aren't being adhered to. Where I have um, headed as far as making a decision tonight is on the PUD. And the PUD established in 1986 is, is zoning law. And the PUD specifically identifies a perimeter treatment narrative in which in order to preserve, I'll read it, the part of the quote is in order to preserve the natural beauty of the, of the development and to eliminate the clearing and grading of these areas, a minimum of 25 feet of natural vegeta vegetation would be left undisturbed. Um, and that's, that's in the PUD. Um, so that's part of the zoning law for this development, as well as the traffic impact study. That is also specifically outlined within this PUD on um, item four of the PUD. And I know that the developer did submit a traffic uh, impact study. It went to the engineer's office for an evaluation or some feedback. I did reach out to the deputy engineer this afternoon at about 4.15 and was informed as of this point in time, uh, those a new submitted final traffic um, impact evaluation has not been submitted. There was some specific um, discussion that needed to be addressed on the final impact study as far as line of sight for that street coming out um, on Girdle Road that needed to be addressed. And as, as of this point in time, um, I don't believe that final traffic impact study has been submitted to the engineer's office or the board of trustees for review. Um, so with that, those are some of my important comments. I, I, I would like to say that, you know, um, Mr. Lucas, like I said, addressed a lot of the confusing points that I think some of the residents had as to why um, some, some of the restrictions or deed restrictions weren't enforced, who has that responsibility. I will tell Mr. Rizzolo, I did walk that property. I walked the whole perimeter spent about an hour and a half on out there on the day the actual tree cutting took place um, to look at uh, how it would impact the residents um, adjacent to the boundary there. I did walk the area with the developer and, um, I, and I understand where you're coming from, um, what it looks like now. Um, I, I, I don't think that's permanent, um, but again, we don't have the ability to um, take enforcement action on property owner as far as the clearing went on, on that day and time. Um, so those are some of my initial comments. So Heather, Ms. Freeman, um, do we have all the approvals from the, the county as far as any subdivision regulations for this final plan? It sounds like we don't have the final traffic impact study, but everything else from the county is well, um, just to clarify, um, Madam Chairman, this is not a subdivision, um, so there won't be um, 
correspondence from Lee County Planning Commission as far as that component. Um, the developer did submit to the township all the required items that we require under the PUD for a final development plan. Um, I don't know the status of all those approvals from all the other um, county agencies. Um, I just confirming what um, what Carl said. I, I know that there there's a, there is a revised traffic impact study that has is being prepared, um, and and I do have copies of correspondence back and forth between um, the county engineer, the deputy county engineer, and the developers um, engineer about. Um, the improvement plans themselves, there were some changes made. We have copies in our files, um, but it's my understanding that um, they still are working to get all the county approvals, um, but they are asking for the township approval this evening. Before you sit down. Yeah. I just I wanna, I wanna get something else onto the record. I know we'd received an email um, to which you provided some background for the trustees. Thank you for doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to just get on the record the the density and that we're still with respect to quail hollow <clears throat> the development is still well under the maximum threshold of density that was originally permitted when the pud was designed right so the pud sets a max density of no more than three units on a gross acreage basis so the gross acreage is defined as the overall pud which as mike stated previously is about 545 acres mm -hmm. um, which allows over 1600 uh, units we're well under that. Um, if this plan is approved tonight, we're still under 900 units total for the overall PUD. I think and we don't have the traffic. We don't have it, which we asked for at the preliminary approval. We haven't received the final. Well, a, a traffic impact study was submitted. Revisions were requested by the county, and those revisions have not been received. reviewed yet. Okay. Yeah, or received. Correct. Thank you. So I'm wondering if Mr. Victor would like to come and address any of questions Ms. Circa had regarding the this, the road impacting her yard as far as any landscaping around the street or if you wanted to address any other issues that were brought up looking for Mr. Victor or me? Mr. Victor I, well, or the applicant <laughs> anyway, Excuse me. Right. Todd Victor 7685 Snowberry Court mentor will yeah, we can we can uh, help on putting some trees, pine trees, up down the entrance way to block some of the light for the on the entrance of uh, off a of girdle next to their house. Um, we don't have any. We didn't have it on the plans right now, but we can work with. Do the you have owner. a lighting plan part? Have you got that far in your planning or? As far as how many street lights you know? No, okay. we don't have it. The street not, lights not laid out yet. Okay. CEI will tell us how far and where that's going to go. Okay. And um, I will. I'll, I'll talk on uh, um, the perimeter. Twenty-five feet. It says it's on heavily wooded area. And it says if it's not heavily wooded area, we can build a mound in that area if we want. It was meant to beautify our subdivision and keep the beautification of Quail Hollow's property, if you read it correctly. Um, and if there's no trees or anything, or I mean, it says heavily wooded and non-heavily wooded areas, we can go in and build a mound if we wanted to. So, while he's up, any other yeah. questions? Yeah. Um, well, I, I see where you're 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 you're, you're reading that from because I have the, the perimeter treatment narrative right in front of me, and it says um, the maintaining of these natural wooded areas will enhance the beauty of the development in the areas where the site and adjoining lands are void of trees or other acceptable vegetation, the developer may elect to provide mounding, landscaping, or both dependent. Right. So we can go in and do grading in the non heavily heavily worded areas, in my eyes. But it's just not specific to trees if there's other vegetation that. It's not specific, okay. though. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's. But that's within the 25 foot. Right. Correct. Um, 
with this. Have you been able to address all the concerns of all the residents with respect to all around the development in the 25 feet, or is there still some areas where we're not? I know, I know some people have had conversations. My understanding is there's a couple of agreements along Viceroy. Is there, there's other areas that haven't reached an agreement with respect to um, doing any modifications pursuant to this. Is that, is that, fair? Is that correct? We couldn't come to agreement on over on Orchard with anybody, just on Viceroy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Will you take any comments from the audience? Well, the audience portion is closed. Did you Mr. have a question or? Well, yeah, on the entrance coming off Girdle. Should he be at the yeah, you should come up. There. Dave, you should. Dave Barrington. Or uh, Dave, Dave Novak should. Wait. Dave, you're the one speaking, right? Dave Novak, were you speaking? I can. Were you speaking, No. Who was speaking? No, Dave Vitas was speaking. Oh, Dave Vitas. Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. I couldn't tell. I thought it was just speaking. Hey, don't confuse the old people. Now. Well, I, they're both such <laughs> mellifluous nice, voices, it's easy to see how I confuse the identity. In, in my research and, and some of the things, and in, in my, my agree to this, when it comes to a deed restriction, uh, the deed restriction must be agreed upon if it's being voided by 100% of the surrounding property owners that the deed effects. Is that not correct? Or a judge can do it. Well, I, I don't know if it's 100%. It, it's, if you're talking about an amendment to the Declaration and Covenants. I'm just saying a deed, no, I'm just saying the deed, we've all agreed that in the deed there's a 25 foot. Yes. There's a 25 foot buffer zone, right. right? Okay, in order for that buffer zone to be changed, it either has to be 100% of the surrounding property owners Everybody has to agree to it, or the courts could change it. So going, picking, and choosing who can do this and who can't, again, affects everybody as a whole. So again, I don't know that you can, and again, you're saying you guys have no control over it, but that's, it's either the that's courts. That's not what I said, actually. Yeah. There's I, a difference you between. You do have the control, because you're either going to agree to it or not no but no what i what i said was we don't have any control over the declarations restrictions and right. bylaws i, I understand what, I said. what you're but saying. what i where i disagree with what you said i said which is inaccurate we have as part of the rezoning the 25 foot buffer perimeter and we can have enforceability on that because that was part of the rezoning application that established the original r2 pud over the 540 acres right Okay. Okay. So if, if I know that, you call that lawyer gobbledygook. Yes, but, uh, well, yeah, 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 lawyer, yeah, lawyer yeah. technical yeah. stuff. The getting back to the entrance way off girdle, Ivy Ridge, I believe it is that, that road. There's still each of those property owners. There's supposed to be a natural 25 foot buffer. Okay, the road, each side of the road should have a 25 foot buffer, and there's nothing there. They've they've cut down every tree that's that on that entrance. There's a, there's no trees there, and I don't know if any of the residents of, uh, of the, that own those two two properties, but there is no 25 feet natural buffer there. And again, according to the deed, they're not allowed to just randomly decide who gets it and who doesn't get it. So. There's no 25 feet foot buff, natural buffer along that area. So either the township has to react to it. You're saying you're not going to react to it. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I'm not, but, but you want to <laughs> saying, attack, I'm just saying that, that, that it's, it's just, it's, if you just look at it, you can see. I mean, it's just, it's there. So, so yeah, there should be a 25 foot buffer around Quail's property and adjacent property owners, and I think it has already been infringed upon that there is not 25 foot around the whole area. 
Okay, thanks, Mr. Vitas. I have a question. I just want to, I think, to make a point, clarify something with Mr. Lucas. So, with respect to the 25 feet, right now the, the private landowner could encroach on it. And should we come back and choose to make that part of the deal, that would be up to their cost or whatever to restore that. So there's really no enforcement. What you've been saying is there's no current enforceability on the 25 feet going forward. There could be, and if they, if we required them to maintain it, they, the developer would then incur cost to do so, I suppose, effectively, right? Well, when you're saying there's no, when I, <laughs> I don't remember saying that either. When you're saying there's no enforceability to the 25 foot buffer? It's not yet because it's not, because there, there's no restrictions filed on it yet. It's just- No, the 25 foot, no. No, no, that's not. Okay. The, the 25 foot buffer is part of the rezoning is completely separate from the declaration and restrictions, which the township doesn't, which hasn't been applied yet to this particular right. development. The 25 foot buffer is part of the overall perimeter of that entire 540 acres at the time of the rezoning in 1986, because it was submitted as part of the rezoning process. So that is always, as a matter of rezoning, uh, subject to enforceability by the township. So what I'm saying is regardless going forward, if we choose to make that, the final development plan, if they've gone in, invaded it, and we say you can't do that, then it's on them. They're gonna have to restore it. Trees would have to be replanted, and that would have to be, if it's if it's been violated, we would enforce yeah, we have the ability to, we have the ability to go to the court the, and the cost that. Of, Correct, they would have to, if they've not done that yet, then they have to restore it. If they, you're, I don't know how you would maintain the 25 foot butter buffer otherwise. Right. Okay. Without the restoration and remediation yep. of what perhaps inadvertently was infringed upon within that 25 foot parameter. Right. That's my point. They yeah, have to I got fix it. it if it's been violated. Yeah. Got it. Either of you had any more points or? Uh, I would just like to clarify, you know, one more thing as far as this 25 foot buffer. It's part of the P PUD, it's zoning law. I, I mean, this is phase 30, it started in 1986. I don't know whether or not it was ignored, overlooked. I don't know. But what we do know is, you know, it's, it's part of the zoning law and, it, and it's the current law. So I, you know, I think it's important. I think with respect to, I think honoring the, the history and everything with respect to Quail Hollow and taking a look at all of the development that has occurred and, and, and weighing the options that we have here. Um, I like the plan. I mean, it's consistent. It looks like other phases of Quail. We've got similar things and maybe in some cases it's even has a little more separation in, in buildings than the prior phase did, which I know there was people over the last couple of years that said, look at how many houses are crammed in there, yada, yada. We know that density is a hot button issue in Concord Township. And I, I believe uh, in casual conversations with the developer, one of the, I don't want to call it, it's not really a formal, but we've had conversations about the alternative would be to this plan if something was uh, to be proposed that would have a more universal honoring of the 25 foot buffer that we'd be looking at a lot more units, that we'd be looking between 60 to 70 more units. And so when I look at the decision of approving this or moving forward and the history of what the township has approved and how quail has developed, uh, it seems to me in front of us that we have to weigh uh, those different things. And it's within us to, to accept that and go forward or to come back and say, hey, this is, a, this is something. And that's not an easy decision to make. Uh, again, we've had a lot of conversation in recent years about density. One of the concerns we have with this development as we required with the preliminary was the traffic study. Um, Girdle Road is getting more and more developed. There are more developments there. Traffic is definitely a concern, um, which is why we asked for it. We had specific conversations about it back in July last year. Um, and like I said, I understand, um, I understand how painful it is to lose background. I've had for trees in your backyard. It's been part of my personal experience as a resident of Concord Township. Um, I can appreciate it. It's always, you see a development cleared. It's always shocking and it takes time to get used to it. So I understand that. Um, I also know that it's important that we balance uh, 
balance the township's perspective with the developers and with the residents. And it certainly seems since we've come forward with this, since we've advanced in this conversation, that there's been more and more uh, discussion about this buffer and there's been um, more dissension and people are not more, more not, not in agreement with this. Whereas I think when we had the, the conversation, the plenary plan, that wasn't, there wasn't that kind of discussion. It was right. like, okay, we'll do this. And we talked about trading off density for quality development. And it seems to me that we've reached an impasse on a couple of key issues with respect to this. And well, not a couple of key issues, one issue, and that being the buffer. Um, and the fact that we are, are, are sitting here and having a lot of conversations about uh, the legality of it, I'm definitely concerned about the fact that this is is not present in the plan at this point. Um, like I said, we were having conversations last year and it wasn't as much of an issue as it seems to have become as this plan has progressed. We're still waiting on a uh, traffic study and an understanding of what the impact is and what the development plan of that, how the county would proceed with handling that inflow of traffic and those are still significant points. We were always gonna see development on this land. There's always gonna be houses there. What we're really talking about at this point is what kind of development we're gonna see there. Um, and I have some concerns about what we're looking at at this point, at, you know, as we've gone through this process. Thank you. So I, I agree. You know, it's it's a struggle because we want what's best for Concord Township in terms in terms of you know density, road, in, you know, traffic study or traffic impact. You know, I live along that area too, so I get it. I, I understand. I know how it is when. You think your backyard's going to look a certain way, and then it changes. So we certainly appreciate everyone's insights and, and concerns. Um, but I tend to agree, you know, with a, with a final plan, it seems like there's still a lot of unanswered questions. There's still a lot of residents that don't have sort of the, uh, are getting the same treatment as everyone else, and that, uh, we don't have all of the final plans, including the, the final traffic impact, impact study. So that does cause con some concern for me as well. I think, yeah, I think, I I think we're ready to, to move on. Uh, uh, Mr. Novak, did, did you have something you wanted to address us with? My name is David Novak from Barrington Consulting Group. The address is 9114 Tyler Boulevard, Metro Ohio. Um, a couple things. One, uh, in regards to the traffic impact study. Um, if I read your code correctly, while it should have been submitted for the preliminary plan, however, it was not, and we were granted approval on that preliminary plan um, and there was some discussion at that meeting about the traffic study but again what your code says is that we have to submit a traffic impact study it says nothing more than that it doesn't say that that traffic impact study needs to be approved by anybody I would agree that it needs to be approved by the county engineer but that's not part of your code and that's also not part of, Concord really doesn't have any input on what happens with that traffic study. As long as we submit it, we've met that portion of the code. Um, and as far as the, you know, the 25 foot buffer, again, this has been a long process for the trustees, the residents, the developer, and, and I could appreciate the emotional side of all this. Um, but again, it was my belief or my understanding that when we obtained approval for the preliminary plan, um, it was discussed as to a, um, at least what I took away from the meeting, that the plan that got approved was a better plan than the potential of putting up to, because again, if you look at the 1986 rezoning or PUD approval, this piece of property could have up to two, it was designed to have 250 residential units on it, okay? We're way below that. So, um, but some of that compromise was um, good.
going into those into the buffered areas that twenty five foot buffer we have tried to reach out to i don't want to say all of the residents but um, a majority of the residents and you know we've had discussions and even on the preliminary plan that was approved um, we showed fences along vitas and lazuka um, now we couldn't obtain an agreement with them but again i think we showed good faith effort to make those things happen and the last point that i'd like to make in regard to this 25 foot buffer um, we took a look at all of the parcels within the quail hollow development i'm not 100 percent sure that this happens to be the last one parcel 30 but from my view of what, what transpired since 1986, none of the other parcels have that 25 foot buffer enforced. While I understand this is a new, I don't know if this is the first it is. development that it is. this board is reviewing. It is. Okay. But, and, and so again, I understand that going forward and how you guys want to handle that because you're you're new to the 1986 development plan so but i think it's important to understand that everybody understands that again in the in the quail hollow development that that buffer wasn't honored up until today and depending on how you read that section about the buffer you could read it many different ways and our opinion is is that the purpose of that buffer was to protect the quail hollow development not necessarily the adjacent property owners but again that's that's our opinion so if you have any questions for me i'm more than willing to answer them but uh um you know as far as the buffer again and you mentioned uh, you know throughout all the phases of quail hollow it was it was never enforced Again, I, I, I go back to my previous comments. I, you know, don't, we can't speculate. Was it ignored? Was it just never considered? Or was it overlooked? I don't know. But and it is you can't interpret it differently. It, it, your understanding or reasoning is that it protects the Quail Hollow development. I look at that buffer as yeah, it protects the Quail Hollow development, but it also provides some private natural privacy to adjacent residents, adjacent communities. That's my interpretation of it. And just because it's been done in the past and it hasn't been adhered to, I equate that to, you know, as a young kid not knowing something's wrong and you keep doing it, and then when you realize that it's wrong, you keep doing it. Well, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Um, it, you know, uh, the, you know, the traffic study, it is in the PUD. In the PUD, I would find, in my personal opinion, I think it would be irresponsible to make a decision on a final development plan when there's specific language within the PUD requesting a traffic study and at least looking at those results and say, how is this traffic study going to impact? The existing neighborhood when this new neighborhood is put in if i can't look at that and make that interpretation right. i don't know if i'm making a responsible yeah we i mean i, I guess to respond to that comment I, I agree with what you're saying and, and though it doesn't i think at this point just not <clears throat> seeing understand it's been submitted and the county is just looking at it but saying well we're not we're ultimately accountable to the voters of Concord and the residents sitting in this room, so I have to provide an answer. And when I can't provide that answer, I can't intelligently com converse on the topic and or I haven't had an opportunity to discuss with the controlling entities, I think I'm failing my responsibility as a township trustee. Um, I do want to thank you, and I want to say over the years of being on the zoning board, I've always appreciated when developers have made attempts to reach out to um, residents and, and work things out. I've, I've actually watched developers work the room while we're talking amongst residents and come back and say, hey, we've, we've hammered something out. So I genuinely appreciate that because I think we have to take the totality of development in Concord, the zoning code all in balance and work with residents and developers and try to work things out. And it's always, 
rewarding when that happens. Uh, I think part of the problem I have is that I know that you've done that and we've, we've reached a bit of an impasse here and we're not in agreement. And again, back to my responsibility of the township as a trustee, that's where I get at a crossroads and I'm, I'm asked to make a decision and I don't have all the facts. I can't intelligently discuss 360 degrees the full issue and I can't um, say that, that everyone's harmonious. You know, maybe there's a way to, to work that out is, is sort of where I find myself. Yeah, you know, when you mentioned we thought that the preliminary plan was a better plan, you know, better by whose terms, you know, density is an issue, so maybe better by those terms. Mm -hmm. But if it's not better by the protection of the buffer for, you know, when you rezone and, and the zoning commission, you know, approves it, they're, they're probably thinking about the, the, the adjacent landowners too, not just the, so. I think, I think it's also difficult for us to be, as you said, the first phase of quail that this board's seeing, and I, uh, and the Zoning Commission never dealt with that, wasn't part of the Zoning Commission process. Um, but having been a commission member and approved things and done texts and talked about that, it's also hard to step back to 1986, especially because I wasn't very old, um, and sort of try to understand the thought process of the board boards at that time too so it's difficult to put there and I think we are, we definitely have some noise and, and there's things that need more discussion um, before before we reach that point and I um, again I think we need to be true to that process and and uh, I think there's ways to work it out and we, we, we reach a decision point and we have to go through that okay thank you okay. thank you Mr. Nolan. thank right. you thank you very much um, Mrs. Dawson, can we please have a roll call vote? Certainly. Mr. McIntosh? No. Mr. Dondorfer? No. Mrs. Lucci? No. All right, moving on to item D. Uh, Madam Chair, I will make a motion for a PO to Lake County Telecommunications Department in the amount of not to exceed $151,811 for the acquisition and installation of telecommunications equipment for fire station number one. And I second. Any discussion? No. Great All to in see favor. the project moving yeah. yep. forward. Great to All see it. Right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, Madam, um, oh, do you want to early the future business announcements? Madam yeah. Chair, I recommend we catch capture item F and that way if the trustees decide to go to executive session, there'll be no further business and, you know, the folks can get on with their evening. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Dawson, can you please skip to item F, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. On Wednesday, uh, May 11th at 7 p.m., there'll be a Board of Zoning Appeals meeting here at Town Hall. Also Wednesday, May 18th from 6.30 to 7.30, trustee office hours in the conference room and at 7.30 p.m., the regular trustee meeting here at Town Hall. All right, uh, Madam Chairman, I vote uh, to move into executive session for the purpose of discussing pending litigation pursuant to Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22G3. I'll second. All in favor? Roll call. No, no. Roll call, Roll call no. vote. Thank Roll you. Call vote. Ms. Dawson? Mr. Ma or Mr. Dondorfer? Yes. Mr. McIntosh? Yes. Mrs. Lucci? Yes. Okay, we are going into executive session. Thank you all for joining.